country where racism is the cardinal sin above all, to silence any effective debate about the continuing attachment of Muslim immigrants to Sharia law and their intentions toward the secular systems in which they now reside. Uh, is that this is not a uh, clash against Islam or Arabs. Uh, this is about freedom, not culture. Uh, it's about working with Islamic governments who want to move forward into the modern world, working with Islamic governments who see their face as the face of peace, and working against the violence and the terror uh, and the people who would seek to hold back uh, the world and would seek to disrupt uh, peace and freedom for others. And so that is what it's about for us. Um, the true faith of Islam, we believe, is a, is a religion of peace, and we intend to work with them in that regard. The true faith of Islam we believe is a, is a religion of peace. Islam has to be known as more than a religion. The idea that Islam is a spiritual religion like, uh, for instance, Christianity, is completely incorrect. It would be incorrect to describe Islam as primarily, let alone solely, a religion. Since its early beginning in Muhammad's lifetime, it has also been a geopolitical project and uh, a system of government, uh, a political ideology, if you will. Islam from its beginnings was both a religion and a system of government. For example, the Islamic calendar doesn't base year one from the time that Muhammad was born or the time that Muhammad received his first revelation from God, which I think are both what Westerners might expect, but from the time that Muhammad became the leader of an army and the head of state in Medina. This is the beginning of the Islamic calendar because in the Islamic understanding, Islam is a political and social system as well as an individual faith. In Islam, the separation between temporal, uh, uh, secular, and, and religious power is not only uh, impossible, it is heretical. Only in uh, uh, the complete blending of all aspects of human activity and all aspects of political and legal functions of the state can we have the caliphate, the properly organized state that is, that, that is pleasing to Allah. When Westerners think of religion, whether it's Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, and all the isms in the world, Westerners think that it's a personal issue. A Buddhist will go to the temple and peacefully worship whatever he does, meditates, contemplates. A Jew goes to a synagogue and does his mitzvah, his good deeds. Uh, a Muslim goes to the mosque pays uh, zakat, uh, alms, or go to the pilgrim al-hajj in Mecca, or a Christian goes to church on Sunday, they think it's a personal issue, Rel that religion is a personal issue. So when they look at Islam, they compare Islam with the way they understand religions, and that's the first mistake. Islam is not a religion for personal use. Islam is Sharia law. Islam is a form of government to the world first, then to a personal application. It is not just how you pray or whether you pray towards Mecca. It's how you dress. You dress in Arab culture. You speak Arabic. You can't go to heaven unless you pray in Arabic. You can't read the Quran in English and expect to get good deeds to go to heaven. You read the Quran in Arabic. It becomes an imperialistic system that everybody now must speak Arabic, think Arabic, practice the religion in Arabic. It's a form of law, not just in how you eat, but how you get married, how you deal with your government, how you deal with your military, how you deal with the youth, how you deal with women. Uh, 
every aspect of your life becomes Islam. Everything is Islam. The Jews brought to the Prophet a man and a woman from amongst them who had committed adultery. The Prophet ordered both of them to be stoned to death near the place of offering the funeral prayers beside the mosque. The Prophet wrote the marriage contract with Aisha while she was six years old and consummated his marriage with her while she was nine years old and she remained with him for nine years till his death. In no way is Islamic Sharia, Islamic government, compatible with Western understandings of human rights and freedom of conscience. Traditional Islam forbids conversion from Islam, forbids anyone to leave Islam. There's no way out. And it forbids Muslims and non-Muslims to live as equals in society. It mandates the second-class status of non-Muslims forbidding them to hold authority over Muslims, forbidding them to uh, hold certain jobs as a result. It even mandated in history that houses of worship of Jews and Christians were neither to be built or repaired, making the communities relegated to a perpetual state of decline. O you who believe, take not the Jews and the Christians as aliyah, friends, protectors, helpers, they are but aliyah to one another. And if any amongst you takes them as aliyah, then surely he is one of them. It is not possible for a non-Muslim living in a Muslim society to invoke his uh, civil rights and human rights uh, that would be independent or separate from the Sharia concept. He is expected to submit to Sharia willingly and if he accepts his dimitude, the position of a dimi, uh, he will be a protected person. A protected person is uh, someone who is, in fact, a willing subordinate to the Muslim overlords. We saluted the Prophet as he stood praying, and he came out to us, and we told him that we had killed God's enemy. He spat upon our comrades' wounds, and both he and we returned to our families. Our attack upon God's enemy cast terror among the Jews, and there was no Jew in Medina who did not fear for his life. The hadith very clearly says, the hadith, which is what Muhammad said, I have been ordered to fight until everyone says that there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. So this is how Islam spread to uh, North Africa. This is how is Islam spread all the way to Indonesia. This is how Islam spread in the Middle East. Syria was not a Muslim country. Lebanon was not Muslim. Uh, Saudi Arabia even was a mixed multitude. All throughout the Middle East, that's how Islam spread, it was by the sword. This is why you don't see any synagogues in Saudi Arabia. You don't see any churches in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Christianity uh, virtually is non-existent. Even in my village in Bethlehem. Muslims are taken over. There's only 20% left of the Christian population. In Lebanon, uh, Christian Lebanese are moving by the droves. Uh, Hezbollah there is very active. Lebanon used to be a Christian nation. Now, all of a sudden, it's being Islamized. So, Islam is moving. Muslims who come to the United States and come to Western Europe